I would say it's even following more than, than it's national football, to be honest. And, uh, like I said before, I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge of, of playing you know, it's probably up, you know, Scotland's biggest club and one of Europe's biggest clubs, really, if you look at the history of the Champions League. And they've actually won the tournament. You know, that's a big bit And like I said, it's just, I'm sure it's a big amazing experience for us. And, and how much we hope we'll, you know, make the most of it. Roy well, Ronnie has played the press association. Brendan Rodgers, <coughs> first game with Celtic manager, competitive game. How much does that add to the occasion? I think it's a lot. From, from, from a Gibraltarian perspective, and then you have a lot of base of mine, and a lot of Liverpool supporters, and you know, they, they follow Liverpool, and, and the way Brendan has, has brought you know, the Liverpool philosophy, and I'm sure that he, well, that's what he'll probably do with Celtic. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be bringing in some exciting football, I'm sure. Um, it, it does add you know, that. that Despite the podium being his first competitive match, and, uh, I'm sure that Celtic players, you know, we want to give them their all and, and, and prove to the manager that, they, you know, that they're in the first team players. How do you assess your chances of getting a positive result? I'm not looking at the results, to be honest. Though, you know, we've, we've got a game plan, and you know, as long as we stick to that, I'm sure we'll be fine. Roy, uh, Liam, by BBC, do you think you can progress even further in this competition? Or, you know, I'm very positive. I go into every match for extremely positive, even at that, that international level. I mean, we don't know where the positive that season, we might as well not turn up. Saying that, you know, we also understand that Celtic are, you know, miles ahead of us in, in, in everything that we ask them to do. But again, it's 11 v 11, and, you know, miracles do happen. You see, it's different between international football and club football, but a lot of you guys play in the Gibraltar national team and have had come through that, uh, that group. Can you take anything from those games into this at all? Definitely. I mean, the, the experience of, of playing against some, some of the top nations and some of the top Europe of, of Europe, some of the players have been mentioned before, like Austin, you know, <coughs> the list goes on. Uh, our experience in Scotland was amazing as well. I'm sure the experience against Celtic will be very similar. I know they've got some, some Scots players in the ranks as well, more than the captain. Um, all I can say is that you know, we'll, we'll do all we can tomorrow and I'm sure if we put a shift in, we'll do okay. There's a real passion for football in this part of the world, isn't there? It's really grown within the last sort of five, ten years even. And now, with the, the FIFA recognition coming through, does that add to the feel good factor and give you confidence you can get a positive result here? Definitely, yeah. obviously, getting into, into UEFA and now FIFA is, you know, I mean, since we got in, a lot of people I find. Not, not from abroad, but maybe from abroad, you know, look at it as, as a short, short term goals where, you know, it's only been two years or we've got hammered against Scotland, we've got hammered, you know, let's just look at the results. Um, from my perspective, I find that you're turning the football in uh, leaps and bounds in the last two or three years. Um, as individuals, as individual players, as teams, the fact that foreign players have come in and made our league much stronger. Uh, I myself, I remember I'm 33, but I find I've improved the last three years due to the fact that we've been in ways that we've managed to play you know, much better teams and better nations. And like I said, even, even, even Lincoln, if you look at our past three seasons, compare our performance against Italian to the one against Torchway, right? and you'll see it's a big different side. So yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's, it's proven that, that we have been forward since, since right. years, even though people might think otherwise. So, um, it's been a long season for Lincoln, and Celtic are just starting off there. Do you think there will be a factor there in terms of match fitness between the two clubs tomorrow? Good question. Mark. I don't know how, how, how fit Celtic will be, but you know, at the end of the day, they're, they're top international players, playing uh, top football. A lot of them have got I don't know how many, how many top flight games. So I'm, I'm expecting them to be extremely fit to run and I'm sure you'll see a very big and determined Celtic not wanting to make any mistakes and, and wanting to, to make sure they, they qualify for the third round. Ask ourselves, it's been, it has been a long season and, and it's also very, always very hard to, to try and do both you know, your, your, part, your, your full time job and, and part time football player. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world. But at the end of the day, I, I've dreamt about playing games like this. Since I was in the world, and now that the opportunity is here, I'm not going to let it go past without giving it my own. And of course, there will be other factors involved, like the heat, something maybe not used to, and also the pitch. I mean, how big 
can you use how much can you use those facts in your favour? I'm sure there might be a you know maybe a little positive for us, but I wouldn't think that the uh, like sense of players would be too bothered about the certain of play. And you could say the other way around, you know, when when we've travelled at international level and in grass pitches, does that give the opposition an, an advantage over us? I don't think so. You made the perfect team probably have a the same aspect of pitch to train in every day and so most things in the UK have as as to pitches to train so everyone will everyone that comes here is used to training at least four or five days a week in Astro so I don't think there is any advantage to us. James the radio to talk to sorry. Um, tickets for the match tomorrow are sold in under 18 minutes. Can I ask you, uh, for your reaction, what does that mean for you as a footballer? What do you think it means for football in general? I think it shows us that we need the new stadium. <laughs> we that stadium has to come, especially with the FIFA qualifiers coming up. Um, I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow as well for, to actually play, you know, finally a home game on home turf as well. You know, a competitive match, and it's literally the first competitive match of, of this standard that I'm going to play on home soil, you know, and, and I don't think that will be a positive fact. At the biggest game and with a lot less time, so it's it's practically a full-time job organizing this type of games. And it's been just the club to the club of the GFA. Some help from the GFA. We, we, we must say that it is still the uh, I saw Gareth Gatti and Adrian Margaris, so these kinds of people have been helping us quite quite a lot. The Gary Robert, Ivan Robert have been helping us quite a lot. So we've had help but mostly it's been done by by the Lincoln directors and, and this is this is the first time you actually had to organize something as big as this considering the scale of such as, as I said before, that this is probably the, the biggest club game that in the history of Gibraltar. So we played Tallinn, we played uh, Santa Coloma last year, we also played Sosha. And in all fairness, no disrespect to that team, uh, you know, they don't come even close to the size of Celtic. So, this, the, the, uh, Celtic are one of the big ones, one of the big guns from Europe. So, with that comes all the other problems and all the other uh, requests and TV <laughs> personnel wanting this one in that. So, it's been, it's been a, a steep learning curve for all of us. Um, very experienced from the time. Can I just ask for information? Is it is it still eight teams that play in the Premier Division? Ten. Ten now. And then is there, does that mean there's ten in the second division? <coughs> yeah. And do, 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 so there's twenty teams on the rock and do they all play in the stadium here? Yeah. Watch all of them? And all the kids as well, and all the, the ladies, everyone plays in the right. Okay. Right. Uh, Michael Gannon, Dylan Record. You mentioned everyone's got uh, a lot of the guys have got daytime jobs also. Have you all managed to get the day off tomorrow? Such short notice? No, actually, no. I'm working tomorrow. You're working tomorrow? Yeah. What, yeah. Right, so your customs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, how long your day will be? I'm working from 8 till 3 30. Yeah. Go home. Yeah, I've got my bag from here. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? How tough is it? The it, it is extremely tough, but like I said before, you know, I've, I've dipped the distance I've been for you, so I mean, uh, you just do it. It's across your mind, but then you just go with it. Sorry? I'm just joking. With Lincoln's best, with Lincoln's best Champions League performances coming in in the first half, in the majority of the sense, um, what has Lincoln done in training to try and maintain that for 90 minutes? I'm not, you know, at the end of the day, he's the one that comes up with a plan and, and, and the training session you know, when you do it. But whether the plan comes up right tomorrow, we'll have to wait and see. Have you noticed any difference in, in no, the style of training? No, 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 it's always the plan exactly what, you know, what we've been told and what, what he's had planned out from day one. So if he was, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be telling, telling <laughs> everyone openly. <laughs> I don't think nothing's changed really, it's just, you know, just take game by game, and, I mean, especially playing Celtic, you know. We've got to take all the positives from from the last two games and you know stick to the positives and then get rid of the negatives. What they are, let's see what I'm going to tell you. You'd still be you'd still be in the youth teams, but playing uh, alongside you. This is uh, a closely that team that we take throughout the training for the practice. We we always like to keep the, the youth close to the to the first team so they get used to the coach and get used to the 
the senior players, so when, when they are pulled up, they are not sort of, uh, uh, they don't get stage fright being beside the likes of Roy or Lee or whatever, so they get to know them, they get to know the youngsters as well, and it's, it's, been, it's worked for us for, for the past, I don't know, forever, it's worked for us, so it's something that we keep on, keep on doing with. A win over Celtic tomorrow, Roy, that be stuff that dreams are made of, would you say? A win? Yeah. I think it would probably be arguably one of the football's biggest upsets in Europe. Let's start saying that. And then we've probably become semi professional three years ago. And Celtic have been around, I don't know what exactly, but for many years. 18 years. have been a, a very competitive team in Europe. So I think, yeah, I think it would be a biggest shock ever in Europe. Uh, probably go as far as saying that. It's probably for us as well. Rodin Trevor Kapos from GBC, you know much about the new coach Ole Rivas, but what we do know is he's, his intent is meticulous. Uh, how much research has gone into these opponents, or is it more or less than just sticking to the basics, making sure you get that right, and not so much about the weaknesses that might be able to exploit? You have to ask you that one again. I mean, what, what research he, he does is something that he'd have to answer. I can tell you that. You know, we've got to concentrate on making sure that we perform as good as we think and know we can. And, you know, and then they can't concentrate on, on Celtic. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We've, got, we've got to make sure we play our game. And if we play our game, then, you know, that's up for the best. What I can say is that he's very meticulous in his job and he's constantly trying to look for advantages all over the place. So he, he, I'm sure he, he must have researched them and just the last game, Italian were well, not so well known, don't you respect them? He knew all the positions, he knew everything, how they went this way, how they went that way, so I'm sure he has, has done his own. David, yes, uh, Panorama, um, what goes through your mind when you see that the game is going to be broadcasted all over the UK and obviously it's more hands-on <coughs> with people watching all of, from all over the world? I think we've gone, most of us have gone past that stage now, which going back to especially the, the experience of yeah. having played at international level and stuff. I mean, if you take the first time we, we appeared there, uh, myself, doing a press conference itself, or you know, having all, all the media attention, playing against players that you only see on TV, uh, playing in packed stadiums after only playing in front of five people. <laughs> you know, to be honest, I think most of us. The local players, any anyway, of for Lincoln, we've all played at international level now, and, and uh, I think we've gone past that stage. So I wouldn't think anything would change from, from you know, just being 100 on the ball and, and coming out concentrating and you knowing what to do, and just doing it. The fact that, that, that we're playing Celtic, uh, you know, it's amazing and, and all that, but that will all go out the window once that whistle blows. At the end of the day, you know, we'll forget, forget everything that's you know, tells us just to concentrate on the match itself. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.